And my final questions are some more generic ones around the silver market, the silver and blue market, because you know, as the CEO of facilities like this, you have a unique perspective, your finger is on the pulse of these kinds of industries. And I want to talk a little bit about, um, first of all, delivery times on silver. I mean, you, over the course of your business, you've seen delivery times go up and down and all things in between. Can you talk a little bit about um, what's sort of the, the longest times that you've ever had to wait for delivery of silver uh, and gold? And just talk about a little bit about how you see it going and your forecast for the future and things like that. Because right now, silver is at a, quite a, a low price in the mid-17s. And uh, explain what that means and all the things that go on with it. Well, I think the first thing to understand for silver is that it isn't that much of it. Uh, if you look at the statistic, it's above um, ground known reserves. It's issued by Thomson Reuters from the Silver Institute. It will tell you that there's about 40,000 ounces of 40,000 tons of silver in the world, so about 160,000 tons of gold. So we have a lot more gold than we have silver above ground. Mm -hmm. uh, now, underground, we've got about 15 times more silver than gold, but because we've been using up so much silver in industrial processes, you know, the average keyboard might have a couple of grams of silver in it. Yeah. It's all about what every, every electronic device provides. That keyboard then goes into trash. Yeah. Nobody recovers that gram of silver. And we've had 40 years of electronic revolutions, which means a lot of silver went from walls back into the ground in trash heaps. Right. So every year there's actually less silver above ground, and yet the price keeps on coming low and low. So that, that, that's why I got so interested in silver itself. Mm -hmm. uh, now we see that when we make orders. Right now it's quite easy to get bullion. Um, if I make an order for 100 ounce transmitter bars, for example, within two weeks, uh, I tend to have delivery here. Uh, normally, the real scarcity begins when silver prices go down. Um, last April, for example, it's not last April, it was a prior year, so 2013, uh, prices went from 32 all the way down to 22 in a short period of time, about two weeks' time or so. Yeah. Uh, we had a spike of sales, uh, probably triples the normal volumes. And the same thing will happen to all of us all. Basically, the physical buyers ended up going into silver and snapping them up whenever they called. My delivery time went from two weeks to three to four to five to six weeks. And then the mint started saying, We will let you know when we'll start accepting orders again. They stopped orders. We stopped taking orders. By, by, early, by early May, uh, the world name Canadian Mint, for example, will say that maybe in September. You see, it's it's September. So it's five through nine, that's four months. That's, that's what they were sort of indicated in saying. Basically, they were not accepting orders anymore. They're saying, we don't have visibility. Probably September, we can give you something. Depends on how the bank goes. And such just reflects how small the silver market really is. Because you you know, you get one, call, one gold coin, but you get 70 silver coins. Right. And you're only getting a current mining production, you get about 11, coin, 11 ounces of silver for every ounce of gold, because there's more gold being mined. Silver is mostly a byproduct of other mining. So you can very quickly run short of this. And from a dealing perspective, or even from an investor perspective, I like to own something that's scarce. Mm -hmm. And I like to own something that's cheap. And silver, from what I've seen, is cheap and scarce. And, and consumed. And consumed. And everybody always talks about gold. 